Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 149 and we have a good one for you today. Today's fish is a fish that I personally loved in the aquarium. I had these, I love them so much. They were my favorite fish. Mrs. Ping thought they were boring. I thought they were insanely cool. But let's see what you think. Yes, there is a cat behind me. Today's fish that we're gonna be talking about is bam the marbled hatchet fish now the marbled hatchet fish or scientific name carnagiella carnagiella strigata again that's carnagiella strigata they are part of the family gastro sorry gasteropelicidae pelicidae pelicidae Gasteropelicity. I think that's it. I think that's how you say that. I'm probably very wrong, but I think that's how you say that. But they are the family of freshwater hatchet fish. Um, they are native to the Amazon River, um, as a lot of fish are. Um, especially when they're exotic looking like this, at least in my opinion. Um, they're, but they're not really found in the main water course. They're really found in those tributaries and swing, swing, the streams, um, in that really slower um, moving water. These are not really swift water species of fish. They seem to prefer that kind of slower moving stuff. But they're usually found around dense surface vegetation or surface cover, um, leaves, things like this. Um, Kind of going along with that surface vegetation these are a, a topwater fish for sure um they almost strictly hang out at the top of the water um just they really don't go down at all um you know some topwater fish will kind of go down maybe to about halfway in your aquarium these fish are like top three inches or so um that's about as deep as i ever saw them get anyway now this is a small fish. They're usually about 3.5 centimeters. Oh, sorry, I should say this. Like most other fish from the Amazon, they really like that soft acidic water. So if you do have these in an aquarium, make sure that you have the right water or get the water to where these need. Um, but again, back to their size. They are small fish, usually around 3.5 centimeters, which is about 1.5 four inches in length they're very consistent in size these not there's not giant ones and then really tiny ones <clears throat> these are very consistent i usually only got them up to about three centimeters or so um three and a half centimeters i mean it's not that big a difference but um most of mine stayed around that three centimeter at least from eyeballing not saying that i'm the best at eyeballing lengths but I felt they were a little shorter than that. and trust me I stared at these things a lot in my aquarium I thought they were so cool I still think they're so cool um how do you know you have a marbled hatchet fish well um one of the ways that you can tell that you have a marbled hat fish is a genus Car Carnegiella does not have an adipose fin so that's you know a very good characteristic that adipose fin being that fleshy deposit or a fatty deposit um it's basically a fleshy fin way towards the back think catfish things like this um it has a small gold line that extends from the eye to the caudal fin um right above sort of a blacker line usually um it has this extremely enlarged sternal region I it's basically a boat keel so a sternal keel very similar to um, very similar to like birds and stuff the area below the gold line has this kind of brown and light tan color um, you might say kind of looks like marble Sorry, I tried to make a funny there. It, it's a marbled hatchet fish. This this coloration is very, um, very unique. I mean, I, I don't want to say very unique, but 
with the gold line and this kind of marbling pattern here and you can see here like it, it really does they really do look like marble um, in my I, I can't mistake these um, some of the other carniagelas like have some sort of patterning but nothing like um, on top of that you have these very enlarged pectoral fins um, they're very very enlarged larger than you might think um, just another a quick fun fact the muscles that are attached to these pectoral fins are extremely powerful and actually account for one quarter of the total body weight. So that's basically kind of like, you know, our legs. Our legs are very, you know, where a lot of muscle are, muscles are in our body. They have a lot of muscles attached to the stuff. So that's kind of like their pectoral fins. The quarter of all the muscles in their body, all their body weight, is actually just for moving those pectoral fins. And the reason for that is um, they'll actually kind of beat their pectoral fins. Some people say they beat their pectoral fins, some people don't. Um, I think I think this is a common misconception. I don't think they beat their fins at all. But they'll actually use their fins to kind of lift themselves um, they do sort of glide, but a lot of times they actually sort of use those to sort of glide half out of the water and they'll use that keel just like a boat. And this is pretty much all freshwater hatchet fish. So they'll like quickly run up, use that keel to sort of like break the surface and run like a boat using their fins to sort of stabilize themselves. I think don't think they actually beat their fins like some people think i think it's more on the caudal fin um i feel like that they just hear it but they make such a hum which i feel is actually their caudal fin acting kind of like a boat propeller propelling them through the water um it's really really cool um but i want you to think back to the quarter of their body weight their muscles when you think about that think about you know it doesn't seem like that much but that means that qu a quarter of their total body weight and their muscles being attributed to these pectoral flight muscle we'll call it that's more dedicated flight muscle than most birds out there meaning they have more muscles dedicated to their flying their gliding whatever than most birds actually have to fly granted Birds have other advantages, but it's it's a really really neat evolutionary design. Just absolutely, you know, really cool. And the fact that they're using this keel just like a boat to cut through the water, but not actually leave the water. Crazy. I should though mention though they will jump completely out of the water, which can be a problem. They are a very common aquarium fish you can buy them for probably around two bucks of um, but these fish have several stipulations which is why they do not do well in aquariums for the most part um, just really things first off marbled hatchet fish are very communal they must have a group of around five um, if you really want these fish to thrive and do well really want 10 or more that's at least my experience um, if anyone in the comments anyone watching this video disagrees or they have other experience please put it in the comments but for me I could not get them to do well unless I had more than five and I tried to keep 10 um, they must have I didn't say this they are a lot happier if you have surface vegetation, some sort of floating vegetation in your aquarium. Um, makes it look cooler as well. And the reason for that is these fish really hate bright light, really need it dimmed down, like super dimmed down. Um, that's how they prefer it. Well, that kind of hurts some of your other plants and you kind of need the light to you know see. So really have to like, Play this delicate balance which also 
but the great thing about it is is those surface vegetation actually lowers that light so they're much more comfortable um, another thing remember I said they will jump meaning you have to have a lid these fish will go out if you have a lid they usually um, again in my experience they'll try to jump out for like a couple of days and then they seem to like realize that something's over them and then they stop um anything but there's two more things that go on. i know it's 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 this this video has basically come a list of like what you need to do to keep these alive in an aquarium but that's because i want people to get these fish in the aquarium they're so cool absolutely so cool um so two final things number one you must feed on the surface you see this very upturned mouth these fish are like exclusive surface water feeders meaning that once that food starts to sink they're they're done they're not going to eat that eat that food so you have to get these smaller foods that can really stay afloat allowing them to grab their um food you can see right here um this is actually i can't tell if this is feeding or just natural sort of little things floating around it's not the best picture they're really staying up that top so they need to be flat fruit flies for like reptiles amazing oh my god these things love fruit flies um, love fruit flies now the last thing is be aware that these fish are prone to every common aquarium disease out there so if you have problems with ick in your tank or any of the other fungal uh, problems or uh, DO problems just be aware that these might be the first fish to die they are so prone to everything and they turn bad so fast it's these poor things if they were even easier to keep alive they'd be all over and they're they are easy as long as you are aware of those lists that plethora of things that I said to be aware of um, but let's go to a brighter note and in this video on the interesting facts so now the interesting fact that we're gonna end the video on is this marble like pattern it's not just for looks it kind of is just for looks I shouldn't have said that it's not just to look pretty there is a reason you might have guessed it by now but this is actually camouflaged and what happens is that marble like marble like pattern is um, very much imitates rays of lights breaking through the waters and hitting a leaf that you know those dark leaves especially in the Amazon when they start to decay and everything they turn really black but the light reflecting off them kind of gives that white black sort of wave like pattern um, the fish actually doesn't move that much unless it's startled it's really letting waves and currents floating it around. If it's floating around on top of the water surface in all these surface vegetation, all this leaf litter, waiting to sort of come across an insect. Um, it occasionally sort of twitches if it wants to get to a certain area. It really lets the current sort of float it around. And that really imitates how a leaf would be acting on the water surface. You know the leaves just kind of go random a wind blows them this way then a wind blows them that way then the current brings them over here and then a slight wave brings them back here that's really how they're doing it um and it's actually believed that this line right here the gold stripe imitates on how a leaf has that big midrib which is actually sort of the vein of the leaf that vein of the leaf that's what it's believed to imitate and not only that they actually have a sideways sort of swimming motion as well but kind of turn sideways and really imitate that leaf structure everything this fish does when it's swimming unless it's trying to get away from something um, is pretty much exactly how a floating leaf would act it's incredible camouflage when you see these in a while in a nice green beautiful clear aquarium yeah they don't really look like too much but if you if you watch a video and I encourage you to go on YouTube 
and look for a video of these things in the wild they look so much so much like leaves it's mind boggling but thank you guys so much again i really appreciate it hope to see you again next week we have that very special fish friday number 150 i hope you enjoy it um once again take care of yourselves take care of the loved ones if you'd like to support the channel please click the link down below it is by no means necessary but very much appreciated take care of yourselves take care of your loved ones and peace